Okay, so we have a new video by Depressed Nasagi. 15 red flags and VTuber agencies to look out for. I think this is like a good thing to sort of like, you know, if you ever, if, if you have ever thought of, you know, wanting to apply to a VTuber agency, just interest in VTuber agencies in general, these are things to definitely be mindful of and um, to look out for because there's definitely red flag and this is not this is not even specifically for like vtuber like agencies i think some of these red flags can probably apply to just like you know entertainment agencies like um entertainment industries companies in a general sense as well flags you are pretty apply easy some of these to red spot flags to things in life unfortunately most people are colorblind it can be quite difficult to tell that a certain company is good or legit Especially if you're a VTuber that wants the support of a company yeah, that may mm. be rejected too many times by the big agencies or perhaps aiming that high is a little too daring for you and you'd like to first get comfortable and build your skill sets and network. Whatever the reason you have to want to join a small or new agency, fact of the matter is there are some things you need to watch out yeah, for. Yeah, definitely. The thing about micro corpos and small agencies is that they can't offer a lot of the stuff big agencies can but also has the chances that it will collapse or have bad management that can screw you over mentally. 100%, I'm here to yeah. provide you with some insight and if you have- I mean, that's not, that's not saying that like big like mid-range to bigger agencies can't also have red flags and can't also be predatory predatory as well like have more to add do put it in the description down below this is the red flags you need to watch out for in a vtuber agency in the english side at least because jp has an entirely different yeah culture. yeah yeah everything definitely. in this video will be under the assumption that one is thinking of joining a certain small corpo or a micro corpo or is still in the talking stages with the ceo or management or hr so a lot of these flags may only become apparent once you get some insight into their operations However, I'd just like to clarify that red flags shouldn't be an automatic turn-off. Mm -hmm. No agency is perfect. Yeah, definitely. Every agency 100%. has a fair share of red flags. It really just has to do with how many there are, what red flags you can tolerate, and what are non-negotiable for mm -hmm. you. Just because an agency may have one or three red flags doesn't mean that they are a bad agency. It doesn't mean they're a bad agency, it doesn't mean they're a black company, it's like... Yeah, it, it sort of just depends. Like, you need to really look at it yourself and gauge it, especially if you are in communications with, like, management or, like, you know, a CEO. If you are in that, in those stages, like, you need to evaluate things for yourself and you speak to them and, and look at them. And, like, do, do research. If any, any company you're getting into and you're looking into, do research on, like, you know, if it's a small agency, potentially, like, do some research on, like, who the CEO is, what is this small company about, what is this small agency about, you know, you need, it, make sure to do research. But, no, like, having, like, one but red first, flag doesn't mean it's, like, about a black red company flags that or are something. First seen on the surface, the ones that you notice when you first come across them. Red flag number one, they don't have a website or a company yeah, email definitely. or isn't registered yeah. in whatever country they're in. If a VTuber agency launched without a website, with a TOS contact, like no YouTube channel, no website, yeah, these sort of registered things. registered or doesn't have a company email, definite red this flag. This gives the presumption that a VTuber agency aren't taking the necessary steps to legalize or officialize themselves. Understandable for a short while if they are new, but if they're old, maybe don't. It questions their commitment, intentions, and their ability to be able to fund their agency or help, even protect their talents. It's even greener of a flag when the skeleton team of the agency themselves are on LinkedIn and you can check mm. their profiles or verify their yep. authenticity. Yep. In fact, this is kind of a must-have. This is the least a company can do to make themselves look legit. So yeah. if you're looking at an agency and they don't have these or aren't currently working on it, maybe start asking questions. Red because flag number... That could, because the thing is, right, that's one of the first things they should be doing. Like, you should have, like... Like a like social media presence, you should have a website, you should have email, you should have potentially like a YouTube channel, like these sort of things should be there. And if it's just like it has like a Twitter account, like just a Twitter account, and then just nothing else, just like a Twitter or something with like um an audition tweet that's not it's that's not really um like you that, that there's a red flag there. Like they should have at least something 
there. Number two, the CEO has no successful or good business experience or has no passion for content creating. If they have both, that's the best. If they have none, run away. 100%. I have this thing where if an agency pops up and I'm fascinated by a lot the of the time, um, like, you know, especially we can just like in this industry and VTubing, a lot of these CEOs can just be out of touch. And they don't understand VTubing. They don't understand what's happening. They don't understand the industry. And if like your CEO has no idea what they're doing and doesn't understand the industry, most likely it may fail. Like it has a better chance of failing if this like CEO has no fucking idea what they're doing. Them, I try to look over the staff and the people behind it because I like to study them and see where it leads. And from what I've gathered, a CEO has to either have a business experience yeah. or likes to create content. Yeah. To at least have a VTuber agency that won't collapse in less than a year yeah. or have a big bad drama be the last breath of the agency. Not having one of these elements is fine since you can just hire someone that can do it. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. If you're purely a businessman, you can hire someone that's in the know with the general industry to guide you and help you make informed decisions. And to also you keep your business that route, sociopathy yeah. in check, just in case you decide to want to screw over some talents over their contract. If you're not a businessman, but is or was a passionate content creator, you can hire someone to form a business plan with your creative input. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many VTuber agencies lack these elements. I've seen some CEOs that have negative business experience or content creating experience. We can only speculate why they may- A lot of them just want to power trip and be surrounded by women, oh god. ...an agency in the first place. Of course, I'm not saying that this will guarantee that the agency is going to be a success. A lot of luck is needed to make the yeah. algorithm notice you, and unfortunately, luck is mostly an uncontrollable factor. You could do everything and still fail. Though, with a CEO or management like this, you at least can expect that even if you fail, you'll still have a reliable network, and you've managed to give yourself some experience, growth, new friends. Definitely, yeah. Something you can put like, on your resume. For you, got, you got connections, you know, and connections in this industry is always a good thing to have. The next VTuber agency you can apply to. No abuse, no traumatizing incidents. At least, I hope not. Red flag number three. Shitty fucking models. Look. I'm not saying every agency should go for the big artists like Paco, Lam, Azur, or even employ cracked riggers like Brian or Kefi, but at least think up of a character design that actually looks good or hire designers, competent artists, and a rigger that can actually help one execute that design. I know art and design has a bit of subjectivity to it. There are some design choices that is pleasant to the talents and the agency itself, but may not be pleasing to the general audience. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about models that look like they just got a 12 year old who just yeah, discovered Yeah, and like, you know, extremely cheap, no effort put in, those are definite red flags. Make draw the models for them for 50 bucks a piece because they wanted to massively skimp out on artists. The quality of the model and the character design is one of the first few factors that will make anyone decide to check you out. But I do get it, everything's a lot more expensive now, artists yeah. and riggers and asset makers have become a lot more expensive compared to what they were two to three years ago. Composers and mixers too. As a CEO or business owner in the scene, that's a bit of a headache, especially because a lot of them will often ghost you if you're not one of the more well-known agencies. Mm -hmm. But you gotta roll with it if you want to look competent. One can't start a VTuber agency with a mere 20,000 bucks Like yeah, you, you need to, like, you need to have some level of investment. Like, you, you need to invest some, like, level into it and, like, them not being willing to like invest anything into the company or having such limited funds that the model can't at least be somewhat on a competent level is sort of a red flag. capital anymore. If you intend to start a VTuber agency and don't have that much money to begin with, maybe don't. That money is better used elsewhere. Red flag yeah, don't skip four. on Altus, Social media yeah. account is literally dead, isn't doing anything to actively promote their talents or their activity, and their website is unupdated. I'm not saying that they should be engaging with the talents literally every day or making posts 24-7, but if their social media platform aren't engaging with the talents or giving out updates like the schedule of their streams, creating fun events, or interacting with the community- now, this sort of depends on, um, like, on, on the, the agency in the sense of if this is an agency that is currently like active and has talents then yes but if it's like 
um, let's, let's say, like, first stage, first stage on production Ian. They, they had, they were, like, like, auditions, like, they were, hey, guys, we have auditions, you know, they were, like, there for the audition phase, and then, like, silence for, like, six months, because, obviously, they didn't have any talents yet, they were still in their, you know, first, um, first generation, so if it's like that, if it's like a, st it's a new agency, if it's a new, like, branch, um, I, that, like, silence in that aspect is okay, in the sense of when the debut is happening, they pick, they pick back up again, and they're, now they're active, like, with first stage, you know, they were silent for the time when they were cooking up and obviously developing their talents to debut, and then once the, you know, um, previews came out and all these sort of things, then the social media picked up and then it started being active, like, um, that is when it's okay to sort of see a, uh, and social media be a bit inactive, but if a company currently has talents and their social medias are completely inactive, that is a red flag, definitely. Then they don't have a social media manager or a marketing guy. If a VTuber agency's official social media account has massive gaps of inactivity, that might be a sign that management doesn't care or yeah. nobody is getting paid enough to do it or just doesn't know what to do. Red flag number five, some talents left just a few weeks or months after they Yes, debuted. that's definitely a massive now, there red are flag. circumstances where this could just be a genuine mistake. Maybe the talent right after they signed- Or high turnover rate, yeah. That's definitely a red flag you should look for. You should go and look at, like, the, the people that are there, the turnover rate, like, how many talents are they retaining? Is there long term, right? In the aspects of like, if this company and agency has been around for a while, what is the lifespan of these talents? Are people staying there long term? If everybody is leaving, then there might be a little bit of a red flag there in the aspects of like, well, if everybody around you has left, how, what, what is stopping you from potentially not like you know what's stopping you from potentially in a year or, or even a year or even less than two years leaving yourself because there has to be a reason <coughs> that talents have really short-term lifespans there are circumstances where this could just be a genuine mistake maybe the talent right after they signed with an agency probably got into an accident or had some changes in their personal life that made them incapable of yeah, continuing it, it as a under the agency. If it's but one or two, it's fine. Not, but such as the case with Waktor, this is literally a sign of management disaster behind the scenes or unfair contracts. It's defensible if it's a one-time thing, because there are several cases where a VTuber or two just are very difficult to work with. But multiple instances, nah, mate, run away. Red flag number six: the talent's PL accounts are more active than the agency account. This is a personal thing and is also leaning more towards the taboo slash forbidden side of the industry. It's also something of a case-by-case -case basis. Obviously, it's a good thing when the VTuber agencies don't have exclusivity clauses and yeah, stop right, the yeah. from being active in their PL yeah, accounts. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes, That's a good VTubers thing. just want to chill in their PL accounts for all sorts of reasons, but... In the occasion that the PL account is much more active than the agency account, yeah, that's especially definitely if a that account flag. is smaller or have a similar following size, that's gonna ring some alarm bells. It's understandable if the PL account is way bigger, because that could just mean you're in need of some quick money or some other reason. But if that is not the case, the reasons could vary. Maybe unfair contract, maybe management is being a douche, maybe the internal environment is not what they expected mm -hmm. or wanted. Definitely. And it's especially worse if those PL accounts are not just more active, but also complaining about the agency or alluding to their unhappiness and grievances. Similar to red flag number five, if one or two VTubers do it, it's defensible, depending on the circumstances. Like if the person is a notorious explosive Manhera, it's still eyebrow raising, but again, there are just some people that are difficult to work with. But if multiple people do it, especially those that are well respected and well known for being level headed and reasonable, maybe reconsider your options. Red flag number seven graduations galore. Yeah. What yeah. makes this different yeah. to red flag number five is not the time of the graduation, but the scale of the company. Yes, the, the scale of the graduation, the yeah. Of the graduation. If yeah, the, number this, of the scale of graduations in comparison to how many members they have. Graduations a VTuber agency has relative to the number of talents they host is significant. That's no longer just a red flag, it's a red flag on fire. For example, 
if a VTuber agency has had 15 talents but has had 7 graduations, leaving them with only 8 remaining, that's going to imply multiple things that I won't get into, but suffice to say, all those are going to be very negative. Mm -hmm. It's fine yep. if it's like 15 talents and 3 graduations. Yes, yeah, yeah. If it's like 15, but like 2, 3, yeah, that's fine. But if it's like half or more, that's a massive red flag. 30 talents and 7 graduations. Relativity and context will be important, so if you do find your desired agency having an oddly significant amount of graduations, look out for their updates and their previous posts around said graduations. It could tell you all you need to know about their management or if they have plans to change things up for the better. So yes, these are the red flags that I think you ought to look out for in a VTuber agency. At least, externally. Again, if you have more, do comment down below. I'll make a comment thread so anyone can see it. Next, we're going to deal with internal red flags. The kinds you might notice when you have one foot into the agency. Mm -hmm. Red flag number eight, they don't give you a contract. Give you a tight window oh, in signing no. the contract, oh. or the contract is absolute whack. I've heard of some cases where some yeah, agencies literally don't give red you a flag. contract or give you only a couple days to sign it. That should not be the case, as they, the feature They should not give you a time frame, and they should they should always give you a contract. If they don't give you a contract, that's a massive red flag. ...themselves should be given ample time to review the contract, or enough time to get a lawyer to look into it. Also, look into the work hours, the obligations, and the things they can provide for you. If it's too good to be true, then it most likely is. And if the membership or revenue percentages are anything below 50%, then oof. I'm not saying that anything below 50% is automatically a red flag, but I sure do hope you know what you're getting into and have a plan on how the agency can work. It, it, should, it should at least be 50%. Someone violates a contract in an agency, I assign the blame on both parties. The company, if the contract was predatory, and the talent themselves for ignorantly signing a stupid contract without anyone well versed in contracts like a lawyer to read over it. But I do pin the blame more on the agency. Most people who want to join agencies, they're not exactly business literate or even financially literate. And, and they some, don't have the means to get a lawyer. And some of these people may also be younger as well, which is something that also need to like, you know, uh, to, to can, can give people more leniency on the fact is, yeah, also some of these companies may try and like, you know, try and target younger people because if you're younger, you may be more inclined to sort of sign one of these contracts because you know you don't have as much like experience in dealing with contracts or looking at contracts and you know a younger person may be more inclined to to sign a predatory contract or you're to read it over these are just young people who wants to make yeah. content and stream and be given vtuber avatars and lots of businessmen that wants to start vtuber agencies kind of know this the agency is supposed to protect them, not screw them over. So if the agency can't guarantee you that as you read over through your contracts, or worse, actually makes yeah, yeah, essentially yes, there are young yeah, it's like young, it's it's people like knowing that they can target people and that younger people are prone to audition for these sort of agencies and you can get one over on a younger person. So that's why you need to be careful. Veiled threats on things that will happen if you can't deliver. Maybe don't. Red flag number nine. They have a major emphasis on lore rather than concept. Let me just splash you with the cold water. Lore is irrelevant in this industry. Lore is fucking bullshit, And the bullshit, emphasis on yeah. that just makes me think you misunderstand the appeal of VTubing or your priorities are misplaced. Yeah. The only people that can afford five minute lore videos are big VTubers and big agencies who can afford to spend a huge chunk of change for a fun side project or if they want to make a universe that they can make merch of or media franchises with. Unless the agency intends to have lore be used, like the agency's concept, generations, future members, or whatever is tied around a certain continuation of lore, then it could be excusable because at the very least, the lore is getting used. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about debut lore. You know that trend where new VTubers put up a shit post. No, it's like there's like a, there's like a, a connection between like generations, you know, or like waves. About their origins. I think those are a hit or miss, but they're mostly okay. If the lore for a certain VTuber is one or two paragraphs to worth, just an explanation for the concept and origin, then it's fine. In fact, that's how most people do it. That's how most people should do it. No, I'm talking about fanfic and animations and attempts yeah. to make storylines or entire universes around your agency or around your character. 
If it's pages of twists and turns and sad backstories and world building and redemption arcs, you have priority issues. Fact of the matter is, concepts are more important to a generation or an agency rather than lore. Strong and interesting VTuber concepts are what will appeal it's way to more fans important. and to people who want to become yeah. VTubers. Red flag number 10. They don't have a skeleton team or the team consists I've seen some agencies who is literally just one person. ...of only a few managers. I don't know if this issue speaks for itself, but just in case it doesn't, a VTuber agency needs multiple people to run. Yeah. If it's new and only has a few members, as, and as such only has one or two managers plus the CEO, then it's fine. But if it's like 10 VTubers and only two are- Yeah, yeah. If it's, if it's a new agency, then that's excusable. That's okay. But yeah, if it's like something that's already like up and running, it's been around for a while, and you have like 10 VTubers and like two managers and a CEO that's bad. Three managers, that's gonna be a bit of a problem. For an agency, you'll need all sorts of staff. Video teams, social media managers, general managers, Editors, all that sort of those stuff. sort of things, yeah. If the agency you intend to join has none of these and it has existed for quite a while, that's gonna be a bit of an issue. Because what will happen is that a lot of the work will be done by you instead of for yeah. you. All the reaching out to artists and people to go for a project, all the video editing for clips and highlights, the schedule, the thumbnail creation, the brainstorming of ideas, the moderating, so that's gonna you. be left to you. Yeah, and it's and like, that's the and it's like you might as well be an indie. That's yeah, that's in the how on issues that um, sometimes yeah, like if you're a like sometimes like these small agencies they need to like build upwards and essentially sometimes yeah, it's like it's literally like okay, why am I here? In the sense of I might as well be an indie because they don't have staff or they don't have enough staff. Whether it actually, you know, because the how and thing is why people want to join agencies is because they take things off of your hands and they do things for you. But if it's the case where there's not that many, like, people working there to the point where, like, you're basically doing everything yourself, most things yourself, it's like, well, why am I here? I might as well just be an indie. The case at that point, you might as well leave the agency yeah. or instigate and initiate changes or negotiations, because at that point, you're just being an indie with a corpo unnecessarily taking a massive chunk yeah. of your money. Yeah. Red flag number eleven: the CEO or a lot of staff in the agency uh, doesn't touch. know yeah. jack shit about the industry. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many people who try to get into the scene are actually completely out of touch with the VTuber industry. I think this is something a lot of VTubers should do just to test the people handling them. Try to get them to say who their Roshis are, what their mm. favorite agency is, why they decided to make the agency, and why them. What they think they can do better, what lessons they've learned, what mistakes they've seen from other agencies that they'll try their yeah. best to mm. avoid. If their answers are incoherent, or they're just skirting around it, or they sound unsure. Yeah, I, I think definitely, um, qu questions I would ask is like, yeah, like, what's your, like, track record for success? What do you think you can do? that can stand out in comparison to other VTuber agencies and companies. You know, what's what's your background in VTubing? What's your knowledge in VTubing? You know, do you have prior like knowledge and experience being a VTuber, being in the VTubing industry, actually watching VTubers? Like these are very important questions to ask because definitely um, it gives them, like in the sense if I was asking these questions, it definitely gives me more green flags. Like, oh yeah, I've maybe I've been a VTuber before. I've you know, been a, you know, I've been a VTuber before, I've, you know, so they're familiar, they, they, or that they've been in the, in, at least if they haven't been a VTuber, that they're knowledgeable in VTubers, or they've been in the industry before, like, they've been inside of the VTubing industry, they have prior experience, maybe working with VTubers, knowing VTubers, potentially even maybe some people leave a VTubing company to start their own company, you know, these sort of things, which are, like, essentially would turn a red into a green flag, you know, so it's important to ask a lot of questions. Or are nervous, they don't know who the fuck Yago, the Gunrun, Riko Tazumi, or the other big players like Sakana or Aviel is, they don't know a lot of the big VTubing drama, they don't sound passionate and only know who Gura and Iron Mouse is, you better be hoping they got a consultant or an advisor that yeah. actually knows the industry. And if they do, try talking to those people yeah. too. It's, okay, the thing is, it's like, um, sometimes even the CEO is out of touch. If the CEO, like, not knowing everything or only having a surface level of knowledge, if they have, like, hired a team 
where like the managers and like the the people that they hired n know like say like say essentially like okay the the ceo is like a business guy like oh i'm a business person and like i have my staff who are like uh, knowledgeable on vtubers and know about vtubers so they can sort of you know fill fill the ceo in on but like on things to do with it when vtubing and knowing vtubing that may not be as bad essentially um but you know it sort of depends but definitely it would be better to have a ceo who knows and understands the industry that they're getting in vtubing has popped off the most popular female in the world is the god queen herself pecora according to stream charts a lot of the heavy hitters in the female side of content creating both in jp and en are vtubers because of these Fucking Silicon Valley types and soulless corporate execs are gonna be wanting to get a piece of that pie. They just want to make money without caring for the industry yeah. or its people in any way at all. This is going to be bad for you. They're not familiar with the industry. They don't know the. It's like how do you stand out in the are, industry? Yeah. How do you and all that other stuff? How do you and be successful in this they're industry? Not going to they be don't able know. To navigate the industry very well. Again. This is defensible or excusable if there are one or two people in management that yeah. is actually in the know. Yeah, if because... yeah, if they hire managers and people in their company, like they have staff and managers who do know, then that's like can be excusable. So at least they can guide those people in the right track, but sometimes this may not be enough. Red flag number twelve: the CEO seems to favor only a couple members. Not to confuse you with the CEO just regularly chilling with certain staff or certain members, sometimes there are just certain personality types that mesh better with certain people. The favor that I'm talking about all has to do with assets, support, and models, and all other types of yeah. tangible things. This is going to lead to a very tense internal environment. There are a lot of stories where CEOs make VTuber agencies just to create their own harem. But sometimes, this problem isn't necessarily the CEO's fault. There can be cases, and there have been cases that I cannot specify, where the talent themselves are actually the ones to throw themselves to the CEO and appeal to their ego or give them lots of attention in an attempt to be favored. But it's the responsibility of the CEO or senior staff yeah, members to, to watch out for this and be professional. Push, yeah, Red to flag like number stop 13, that kind of behavior. Delayed payments. If you hear oh, a talent or yeah, staff or two mm. getting delayed payments and the CEOs and managers answer in an unsatisfactory manner, then make the appropriate conclusion. At times, it implies that the company doesn't have a proper payment system. Or worst case scenario, the company is doing something else with that money. If you're unsure, ask away. Standard procedures for many agencies is that they're supposed to have their one okay, One thing, never be afraid to ask ask away especially since like even before joining ask 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 questions never be afraid to speak up for yourself never be afraid to ask questions you have to do that like the industry can be predatory these companies can be predatory you have to know how to speak up and to stand up for yourself you have to ask these questions you need to ask questions don't let them like walk over you because um if if a company's predatory, if a manage if management's predatory, if the CEO is predatory, they will walk all over you. So you have to ask questions, you have to stand up for yourself, and you have to look out for these red flags. Their own MCNs. If not, then the business accounts for PayPal and AdSense are linked into their channels. This is so the agency member's YouTube rev is going to be funneled into the agency's own AdSense account and then redistributed based on the percentages that was agreed in the contract. This also applies to donation channels and Twitch. Aside from a day or a couple of days because of system interruptions or YouTube or Twitch just not sending the money at the usual no. time or PayPal being douchey and withholding funds, delayed payments are not supposed to happen. Shouldn't if the happen. delay goes on for weeks or months, then the worst case scenario is definitely what's happening. This is also a check if the agency has the proper infrastructure to make the agency functional. Without an MCN or some other system that allows the agency to collect the talent's revenue, that's going to be a bit of a problem. At times, the agencies also delay payment to outside parties like the artists or composers. At times, the agencies don't even pay these people at all. Red flag number 14. Lack of agency collaborations. When the VTubers yes, within the yes. same agency don't collab- Yes, that's, that, that's a major red flag. That much, that's a big flaming red flag. It could mean a lot of things, from the talents not jiving well with each other, 
which could further imply that the talents are petty and you might not want to be genmates with people like that or there is unresolved drama from within or management isn't stepping up. Whatever the actual reason is, this is bad. Especially if the talents prefer to solo stream or do frequent collaborations with other agency VTubers or indies, but not that much with the members that they're supposed to be. Well, I mean, the thing is, though, if it's active, I would, I would say it's actively a good thing, though, if, if say, um, like, some people in the company um, are able to have connections with other corporate VTubers and VTubers from other agencies. Like, to me, that's actually a bit, actively a good thing if management is able to get you connections into other companies and into the industry in the sense of, like, they're getting you collaborations, they're helping you make connections, because actively, like, that's good for your career in the sense of even if this company, like, blows up, even if you leave or, or whatever happens, if... The company is good enough in the sense, if your manager is good enough in the, in the sense of you are able to make connections and collaborate with other agency VTubers, other corporate VTubers, that is actively good for your career because this career is, a, like, VTubing in general and a lot of, like, st like just streaming in general is very connection-based. It's extremely connection based and being able to make friends in the industry is extremely important for success and making friends with other VTubers and other companies could potentially help you getting into a different one or could help you being six be to become successful as an indie. Make like having those connections. Be colleagues with. Red flag number 15. Drama. Self-explanatory, honestly. If the agency keeps having a shit ton of drama. And if you are a person that hates that sort of stuff, then yeah, maybe don't. And that's all for the red flags that I can think of. Again, let me know if you have other additions in the comment thread down. Okay, so um, yeah, so this is a breakdown sort of yeah, like you know um, a, like th these are all like red flags you should be looking out for if you are you know auditioning for an agency, if you've gotten past the audition to an agency, like ask questions, look for these red flags. I actually um. I did. I, well, I mean, I got, I was um, given a contract for a VTuber agency, but I declined because I saw red flags. I'm not going to, obviously, I'm not going to specify which um, agency this was, but um, red flags within, like, seeing most of these, ta like, most of the talents within this agency were gone. More than half were gone. And after I declined, like, two, three more left. And so I determined it as um, seeing most of the talents leave. And also a major red flag was that um, the I was told by the manager that the CEO does not believe in promotion, does not believe in investing in promotion and wanted to cheap out on my model and didn't want to invest money in my model. So that that like made me okay i'm out i'm stepping away so um yeah but um definitely uh you know you need to look out for these things stand up for yourself don't let look, don't let this sort of like oh my god i i got in this like overshadow your judgment right you need to be careful you need to look out for yourself stand up for yourself signing you know you could potentially sign a contract and be signing yourself off for like a year you need to be fucking careful, so remember that. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did enjoy this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and join me on your channel for more VTuber videos and content. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.